What's going on guys? Welcome back. We're out here at the gun range. Alex and I have been working together uh, for about two months and we've been working so hard trying to put out some good content for you guys that we realize that we haven't even shot together yet. I've never got to see Alex shoot. He went and bought a Canik um, Meta SFT. I've never shot a Canik. I've only held them. They seem like a really good quality firearm. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to have Alex shoot five rounds on a high value target created by a former Navy SEAL and uh, really good targets. Check them out. They're not a sponsor. We just love the targets. And then we're going to assess his shot placement and see if I can help him out any. All right, range of hot. Okay. Nice. Good job. Smooth. <laughs> All right, so combatively speaking, very phenomenal. But here's one of the things we gotta take in consideration. If you're trying to help someone become better, we need to identify if they have any fundamental issues. So what I'm gonna have him do now is fire five rounds, once again, even slower. And his goal is to try and stack these rounds. And that's gonna help me identify if he truly has any fundamental issues. I don't know exactly where he's aiming, but um, that's the only way you can really fine tune a shooter, okay? so. Next five rounds, number two. So pick a spot on that number two okay. and uh, just aim for the same spot each round. And you and said slower this time? Slow as you want. And you can also, if you need to mentally reset, just go ahead and reholster and that'll help you kind of just get a good reset. Okay. That way you're not naturally wanting to shoot faster. Nice. Nice, good shooting. Awesome shooting. That shoots nice, man. <laughs> so overall, phenomenal job. He has a really good set of fundamentals. Where were you aiming at, here or here? Uh, I was aiming at the top right of the two. Okay, so we know that his sights are on. We know that his trigger manipulation is good. He's not changing his grip. So realistically, if I was teaching him as a client, he came to me, I would just go ahead and start jumping into a, a lot more aggressive shooting, more combative style, and have fun with it. All right, guys, overall, really good job, as I said, but what we're gonna do now is we're going to add a little bit of stress inoculation through physical activity. We're gonna push Alex back to the 20 yard line. He's gonna do 20 push ups, then he's gonna sprint up here to the five yard line, and he's gonna treat this as a true threat. He's gonna deliver five more rounds in the number three target, and let's see if he can maintain that consistency. Ready? Go! One, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twenty. Move. <laughs> five rounds, number three. Ouch. <laughs> you, are you mad? Yeah. All right, four rounds. Empty bag. Four rounds. <laughs> That's still good, dude. All right. So overall, he did a really good job. He only had four rounds in his magazine. Um, he doesn't have a holster for the magazine just yet. But if you look at the accuracy, okay, it's still uh, being maintained, which is excellent. That's not typically what you're gonna see. If he did this two or three more times and got his blood flowing, it's actually going to decrease or his shot placement's going to increase, which means gets worse. So stress inoculation training is definitely something you wanna consider. Get out of this static range mindset. Just because you can shoot like this does not mean you can do it under pressure. You wanna see something crazy? You can literally Google anyone or anything and find all sorts of private information about them, including your information. I'm always fighting to protect me and my family physically, but also my family's privacy. I have to constantly scour the internet trying to find where all of this information is leaked and contact the websites to get it deleted. That's why I'm excited to tell you about today's sponsor, Aura. Aura can identify data brokers exposing your information and submit opt-out requests on your behalf. Brokers are legally required to remove your information if you ask them to, but they make it super hard to do, so let Aura handle it for you. Aura also does so much more to protect you and your family from online threats you can't even see. It's really easy to set up so you don't have to download several different apps to get the things like parental controls, antivirus, VPN, password management, identity theft, insurance, and more. You get everything at one affordable price. Let Aura do the hard work of keeping you safe online so you can focus on other tasks with peace of mind. You can either let people continue to exploit and profit off your private information, or you can try Aura free for two weeks using my link, aura.com 
forward slash frogman to start your two week free trial. Also link below in the description. And now back to the video. So what we're doing now is just giving you a couple things to consider. Um, this is something that I see going, happening all over the internet and it builds a really bad muscle memory. <clears throat> Typically what you're gonna see is people take a couple shots, their gun goes dry, they'll step left to the right, change a magazine, and then they step right back into this fatal funnel. Number one, we never do that. That's a safety aspect, meaning if I have 15, 20 people online, it's one of the ways that I can control you, but it also builds a bad rep, okay? The last thing I wanna do is step left and then step right back into the gunfire, okay? So if you're gonna get off the X, we need to get off the X, whichever direction you need to go. So let me ask you this, if this were to be real, I take a couple shots, I go dry, I take a step left, would you be okay even at five yards, somebody with my skill shooting at a target sitting right here by you at five yards? And some of you would probably say, yeah, that'd be cool to experience, your little out of your cabeza, but, <clears throat> Most of you would probably say no. Then why am I stopping here? In a real gunfight, this person does not have a really good solid set of skills. So one step to the left, one step to the right is not even close being enough in a gunfight if you need to get off the X, okay? So what we're gonna do with Alex, we're gonna start him here. We're gonna call threat. He's gonna draw and that number four target, five rounds, boom, 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 boom. All right, as fast as he can, yet he wants to maintain a good, consistent shot group. So, ready? Go as slow as you need to, go as fast as you need to. Okay. If you take a shot and you see that the shot, is, there's some discrepancies in it, just either mentally get back into the game or slow down because something's going on, okay? Ready? Threat! Nice, good job. Overall, he is Still got a really good shot placement. It increased here from there. Most, most likely due to the fact that he's never walked laterally like this, but no big deal. The only thing you have to consider is this target's not moving, okay? And this target's 15 feet away, 13, 15 feet away. It's not really hard to hit for a average shooter, okay? So if you put movement on this and the fact that this person's running at you or they're shooting at you, or maybe they're a little bit further away, things are going to change just a little bit. It's one thing to be able to shoot, it's another to be a thinking shooter. So here's something that I do for all of my students. Once we run a combative course of fire, like we just did, okay, it can last for a couple minutes, 30 minutes, whatever. What I'm looking for is synchronization. Does this person have self-control? Are they carrying this aggressiveness over into another drill that has nothing to do with being aggressive? So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna have Alex take five more shots in the T right here. Once again, accuracy. You can go as slow as you need to. You can reholster. What I would like to see overall is at least this consistency or greater. Do me a favor, reholster in between each one. Now, whenever you're ready, go again. Oh, I'm sorry, it's okay. That's good. Let's go check it out. Okay. Yep. Alex, what is what is this little dude right here, man? Oh, that little guy. I wouldn't worry about that little guy. All right, guys, overall, he did a phenomenal job, especially um, for the first time shooting with that gun. If you don't know how to manipulate a trigger in general, it's gonna be very hard to pick up any gun and perform. However, I'm gonna give you one final tip, and I actually did a short video on this recently. This is actually a fundamental issue, okay? And I'm gonna show you how to correct it. If you look at all of his shot placements, if you go to the center of his shot group, not one of them went to the 732, 830 position, okay? This is not a trigger jerk, this is a grip issue. So let me show you um, exactly how this is done and how to fix it. All right, guys, we got a new target up. I'm gonna be aiming roughly right here in the middle of the two. All right, I'm actually going to explain to you what I'm doing and then I'm gonna demonstrate it and I'm gonna show you how to fix it. All right, if you remember, if you watch the short, all right, it's very important that you isolate your grip fingers and your thumb from your trigger finger. The reason why Alex's round went to that 
8 to 8, 730 to 830 position was because he did this. He tightened his whole hand down at the exact same time, which was going to cause that bullet impact, okay? So, <clears throat> all right, now I'm going to over grip. And it goes to about that 830, 845 position. So how do we fix that? Isolate the grip from the trigger finger. And this is one of the most common issues I see on the range. And the reason being, you think about it, our hands, all right, move or fingers move simultaneously all the time. They don't really work independently. So this is something you really got to focus on. So get a good solid grip, firm grip isolate that trigger pull. One of the things I also see is people will get a single double action that's got a heavy, you know, anywhere from eight to 12 pound trigger, a SIG 226. That first pull can be anywhere from 10 to 11 to 12 pounds. Well, they don't have the strength in that finger, so they have to compensate here, okay? But if you pull the hammer back to single action, they really have no issue. So that's just a matter of really building the finger strength in your trigger finger, okay? But if you're carrying that, as a CCW and you find that as an issue, get rid of that gun as a CCW for now until you build that strength. Because remember, we're not shooting paper targets in the real world. And if you throw around, all right, you're gonna potentially injure someone who doesn't need it, okay? So once again, all I'm gonna do is isolate that grip from the trigger finger instead of doing this. All right, so come up here. So that was my first round. That was my second, or excuse me, second round, which I was demonstrating. And then I isolate the grip from the trigger finger with a good solid trigger finger and they're touching, okay? Shooting is so simple. What a lot of people do is they want to complicate it because think about this, if I, as a former Navy SEAL with 20 years experience, can bring you to a range and change your shooting in five to 10 minutes, less than 15 to 20 rounds, obviously you don't have the speed you don't need me anymore, except for other skill sets. So if you are not learning from your instructors to this level, find another instructor. Have a good day and God bless.